Well, we're in this this series. We're in part two of this series, and before, and, and I just want to give a, a little back, a, a little bit of a, a plug for last week. If you missed last week's message, I invite you to go to either our website or download the Life Words Church app and take a listen to last week's message as we kicked off this this overflow series. Everybody say overflow. I, I, re- I really want you to get that in, in your spirit. I, I want some of you to start, when, when you make a post on Facebook or on Instagram this week, use that hashtag overflow. I really want us to just, just make this uh, be a part of, of who we are because I don't know about you, but I want to live in the overflow. I'm, 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 I, don't, I don't know about you, but I, I'm, I'm tired of robbing Peter to pay Paul. I'm tired of rubbing two pennies together, hoping that I can make a nickel out of it. I'm ready to live in the overflow. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about every single area of my life. God has given each of us different gifts, skills, and talents. And most of us are not using it into the overflow. We're just using it just enough to get by. But God says, we serve an abundant God. One of God's names is El Shaddai, meaning he's the God of more than enough. So that, that, that's that overflow type of God. That's that abundant God. And so I, I believe that we serve a God who wants us to live in abundance, in, in overflow. And so that's why I, I think this is the way we should end in, in the year by talking about living in the overflow. Because I know over the next few weeks, most of us are going to start writing down those New Year's resolutions. We're going to start posting on, on, on Facebook and Instagram that New Year, New Me. Come on, we see that every year. It's a New Year, New Me, girl. Same old you, exactly. You, you still, you're still talking about people. You're still cussing people out. But, but it's a new you, right? And so if, it, if we really want to cross over into a new year and allow it to be a new us, it, allow, it, 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 it requires some growth from us in order for us to get to the point that we're living in overflow. And so today I just want to continue it, it, with part two of our series. And today I, I want to share a, a message. I want to give you the title or early. The, I want to share a message titled The Power of the First. The power of, of, of the first. And, and, and for any of, of our, our guests, I said this last week and, I, and I'll, I'll say it again. Here at Life Words Church, we don't, ha- we don't have a lot of sermons that we talk about giving. We, 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 we just don't do that because we believe if we can just give you the principles of giving or we can teach you, wh- whether it's through our growth track or through our life groups, the principles of giving, we don't have to stand up here and talk about it. And, and if, if those of you who've been with us long enough know that we, we don't talk about it. this is actually the first series that we've done where we've talked about giving and, 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 and tithing. And so don't don't be don't run from us today, because what, what I'm saying is if 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 you were expecting another message and, and, and you're upset that we're talking about giving today, understand that you, you have no obligation to give today. This series, this message, this service is our gift to you. And if God leads you in, 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 into, into giving today, then we, we thank you and we thank God for your, your giving today. But I want to talk about the power of the first. And so when God is, is first in our lives, everything comes into order. It, it has no choice to come into order. When God is first in our lives, with, 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 when we wake up in the morning and the first thing on our mind is God, it seems like our day goes a little bit better. It doesn't matter what happened. It's still maybe some unfortunate things that happen during the day, but it seems like we can handle it a lot better when we wake up with God the first thing on our minds. If God is the first is first in our life, then our marriage just seems to, to work out a, a little bit better, right? If God is, is first in, in our marriage, it, it just seems like we can love on each other a, a little bit more, and we're, we're a little bit more happy with one another. I'm, I'm not dreading coming home to my wife because... God is first. Well, if, if God is first in, in, in my career and in my business, I don't mind getting up in the morning going to work. God, I thank you for this because you blessed me with this opportunity. You blessed me with this job. You blessed me with this business. You blessed me with this gift and this talent that I have. So, God, I thank you for it. And the day just seems to go a little bit better 
Even though sometimes there may be some office gossip going along and, and just a lot of office chatter just gets on your nerve. You can take that a lot better when you take God first into the office with you. And so, again, when God is first in our lives, everything just seems to come into order. Marriages, re relationships, e even your body. It, it comes into order when, when God is first, you, you, your, your body functions a little bit differently. When God is first, but before you make that decision on 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 what you should eat or or drink, you 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 choose differently when when God is first, and and, and your body reacts differently. And and yes, even your finances come into order when God is first in your life. But when God is not first, everything is out of order. Everything. I, I look at some, some of my friends who I know that God is not first and it's just a life full of chaos, a life full of dysfunction, a life full of just toxic relationships in and out of these toxic relationships because they never took the time to say, God, I put you first. And if I need to just sit still and wait on you, then that's what I'm going to do. But because we, we, we live in a culture right now that God is not first in so many people's lives, we now live in a world that is completely out of order. And so I want to start today by giving us a, 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 bit of, a bit of scripture today. Go with me now to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 13. And I'm going to read verse 1 through 2 first, and then I'm going to go down and skip a few verses uh, to, to verse 11. But in chap uh, chapter 13, verse 1, it starts by saying, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Consecrate. Everybody say consecrate. consecrate. Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both man and beast, it is mine. So God is saying, give me the first of, of everything. Give me the first of your children. Give me the first of, of your livestock. Give me the first of your finances. Give me the first because it is mine. And then if we skip down to, to verse 11, Verse 11 says, and it shall be when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and your fathers and gives it to you. Verse 12, that you shall set apart to the Lord all that open the womb. These are the firstborn. That is every firstborn that comes from an animal which you have. The male shall be the Lord's, but every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem. Everybody say redeem with a lamb and if you will not redeem it then you shall break its neck and all the firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem verse 14 so it shall be when your son asks you in time to come saying what is this that you shall say to him by the strength of hand of the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And it came to pass when Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go, that the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of the beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all males that opened the womb, but all firstborn of my sons. I redeem. I want you to understand that. I want to say that again because I really want you to get that. Therefore, I sacrifice all I sacrifice to the Lord all males that open the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. It shall be as a sign unto your hand and as the frontlets between your eyes, for by strength of hand the Lord has brought us out of Egypt. So what the Lord is saying, look, there are some things that you are going to consecrate to me and there are some things that you are going to redeem. And we, we're not we're not laying our children on, on an altar as a burnt offering. And instead, we're, we're giving something in, in replacement. And ever since the fall of Adam and Eve, God was focusing on restoring order. Ever since that day when, when, when the fall happened, God has been working consistently on, I, I need to restore order amongst my people. And, and, and in the verses we just read, we see two ways that God begins to restore order. There's consecration that we just saw. And, and so consecrate, that, that word means sacrifice. And, and we see that throughout, throughout scripture, it, it says, consecrate yourselves. And so uh, oftentimes we, we, we don't we don't really understand what that means. And sometimes it, even in, in church, we give the wrong meaning to that word. And we say consecrate that cleanse myself. 
Is that, that's what it means. No, it doesn't. Consecrate means sacrifice. I'm giving something up in, 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 as an offering to God. I, I'm giving up a, a certain luxury. I'm, I'm giving up something, uh, maybe my, my finances or whatever. I'm, I'm giving up something of value to, to myself. I'm giving that to God. So that's what sacrifice means. And, and then the other thing that we see here, we see God restoring order through consecration. And the other is by redeeming. And redeeming means, in, 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 in the biblical text, it means to give something in replacement of something else. When God told Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac, we know that that was a test of his faith. God, God told Abraham, take your son Isaac up on this mountain. Now I want you to sacrifice him to me. And it was, it was truly a test. But at, at, at that moment, Abraham was just trying to be obedient to God. OK, God, if, if your will be done. This is, this is my first and, and only son, but if you want me to give him up to you, sacrifice him, lay him on the altar and, 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 and as, a, as a burnt offering to you, then I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. And so he took his son Isaac up on that mountain. And just before Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, God said, don't you lay a hand on that boy. Don't you lay a hand on that boy. I now know that you fear me. I now know because because you have not withheld your first and only son. You, you come on, we know the story. Abraham prayed for a son. They they they, they prayed and 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 desired a child for for many many years. And so finally, when you get what your heart has desired for so long, that one thing that you prayed for for so long, now God is saying, "Give it back to me." It's hard to do. Come on, if, if, if we're really honest, it's hard to do. Come on, some of us, we've been praying for a home. And w w what if the first time you put that key in, in, into, into the door and you walked into your dream home and you say, thank you, God. And you hear God say, OK, now give it back to me. You, you get that job you've been praying for. And, and all of a sudden you get that first paycheck. You're like, Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. it's an extra zero on this thing. I had never seen this many zeros. Woo we go to Tahiti. <laughs> And God says, before you book that trip, give it back to me. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. I know for, for us, we, we were praying for, for a, a child after we got married and Tasha got, got pregnant and she ended up losing the, the baby. And so we, we began to pray again. God, if it's your will, bless us with a child. And he blesses us with, with Monet. And I, I, I just think, what if God would have said, now give her back? Just like with, 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 with the first child, give it back. I don't know if I, 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 I could have done that, but it's because Abraham was so faithful and not willing to withhold the one thing he prayed for, God blessed him. And Abraham looked up after God said, don't you touch that boy. He looked up and he saw a ram in a bush. And God said, sacrifice that in replacement of your son. That's what a redemption, a, a, a offering of redemption is all about. When we talk about redeeming, it's giving something in replacement of something else. And so I'm so grateful today that we don't have to give up our firstborn. We don't have to, to have to give up, you know, the, the one thing that we pray for because we can. God is saying it, th th you can give something in replacement of that thing that's most valuable to you. You don't have to lay your children on, a, on an altar and, and, and give them up any longer. And so it says here, let's go now to First Peter. We're, we're going to still talk about uh, redeeming just, just a little bit. Let's go to First Peter chapter 1, and we're going to see how the, the, this, redeeming, this redeeming concept, it, it, it starts in the New Testament where we see it continue in, in, the, in the Old, um, sorry, it starts in the Old Testament. We see it continue in the New Testament. First Peter chapter 1. We're going to read verse 18 and 19, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, knowing that you were not redeemed, as that word again, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver, gold from your or from your anim, aimless co conduct received by tradition from your father. So what what is being said here, knowing that you were not redeemed by the, the luxuries and values of this world. So you see, back in the Old Testament, they 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 gave a redeeming offering of their, their livestock because livestock was like money back then. 
And so they, they gave from, from their first of, 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 their, of their male cattle, you know, the, the prime, the, the, we're talking about the prime rib. We're talking about the best of, of the best. They gave that a, a, as a redeeming offering. And so it says, knowing that we weren't redeemed that way, we weren't re redeemed by corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. Verse 19 says, but we were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. Yeah as of the lamb without blemish and without spot. You see, in the Old Testament, when they gave a, a, an offering of redemption and they were giving this, this, this first of their uh, uh, a cow or a, uh, or, or a calf, or, or it, it was always without blemish or spot. They were giving the best that they had, the best of the best. And so they were giving the, the cleanest of, of, of the clean. And so it, we have to understand that the clean must be sacrificed so that the unclean can be redeemed. I'll say that again. The clean must be sacrificed so that the unclean can be redeemed. I'm going to put it this way. The clean must be sacrificed. Jesus, the clean, must be sacrificed so that the unclean, you and I, everybody in this room, everybody in this world, so that the unclean can be redeemed. And so if you don't get anything else from this message today, I want you to understand that, that, that giving a tithe or an, an offering is not that God is trying to get something from you, but rather than he's trying to get something to you. Come on, I want you to understand that God, God doesn't need anything from any of us. But what he's trying to do through, through, this, through this principle of giving and, and tithing, he's trying to get something to you. And, and so if we, if we can understand that concept, I, I think, I think our, our lives, when it comes to giving, when it comes to serving, it, it, it'd be a, a, a lot different. So you have to move from the mindset of, I have to give today. I, I mean, I go, I go to church, so I guess I, I have to give. No, you got to get from that mindset of, of saying, I have to give, to saying, I get to give. I, I get to give in, in, in my church. You have to go get from the mindset of saying, I have to go to church. My, my mama went to church, my grandparents went to church, and their grandparents went to church. It's just, it's just what we do, so I have to go to church. You have to get into the mindset of saying, I get to go to church. I, I get to be a, a part of a, of, a, of a body of believers. This, this is a, a privilege for me to, to, to be in, in the house of God. We have to get from the mindset of saying, I have to serve. I have to serve on the dream team. Oh, I, I joined Life Force Church, so I guess I have to serve on the dream team. We have to get to a mindset of saying, Lord, I get to serve you. I get to serve alongside other believers. I get to serve my community. I get to, to bless people. It is, a, is it a privilege for me. God, I, I thank you for this privilege that you've given me to serve. Yeah. And so it's all about changing our mindset. It's, it's, it's not that we have to. It's that we get to. And God didn't, didn't have to sacrifice his son. John 3, 16 said that he, he loved us so much that he what? Gave. It didn't say, I, I have to give. He said he loved us so much that he gave. God didn't, didn't do it begrudgingly because, because that's not who he is. That's not in his nature to give something begrudgingly. You, you think every time God has blessed you, he said, well, sh I guess I got to bless Quincy. I guess I got to bless Antoine. I mean, sh I guess. I don't really feel like it, but oh, okay, here you go. That's not, who, that's not God's nature to, be, to give begrudgingly. He, he, he's, he's, a, he's a loving God. He, he, he's a cheerful giver to us day in and, and day out. He's not never thinking that I have to bless my people. He said, I get to bless you. He gives to us freely. And this is why we don't spend a lot of time here t trying to persuade people to give here. Because, because we don't, we don't want to guilt you into giving. We, wanna, we don't want to make it seem like, oh, well, he's he been up there talking about offering for 20, 30 minutes now. So I guess I, I, what they used to say in, in the old church, dig deep into your pockets. Dig deeper into your pockets. Come on, we done heard that before. Come on, I, I need you to dig a little deeper in your pockets today, all right? Amen. We don't have to spend that much time here. Because if, if, we, if we can just teach you the principles of giving and understanding that this is what, is, what I, mean, and I get to do, not what I have to do, then we would do it cheerfully. God is a cheerful giver, giver, and so the Bible says that we should also be cheerful givers. 
So we're not going to stand up here and, and pump you up to give and, and, and make you give. That's a, that's a, I want to let you know now, if, if, if you're ever in a ministry or in a service and they stand up here pumping you up to give, coaching you up to give, that's against Scripture. Because the word says, be cheerful givers. And, and if you pumping me up to give, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm feeling guilty because I only had $50 in my pocket. And, and I, so I gave my tenth. I gave $5. And now you pumping me up for five or, or, or ten more. I'm going to give it begrudgingly. And, and if that's the case, I don't need to give it. Because God wants a cheerful gift. So we don't pump you up here and then that because it goes against scripture. And uh, and other reason is because although you may choose to give, if if I stood up here and pumped you up to give it, you may choose to give, but it won't come from a cheerful place. It won't come from a cheerful. And and if you're not giving cheerfully or giving begrudgingly, oh, Pastor Trey, want me to give? uh," And you come up here like this with a balled up fist and I really don't want to give it. You might as well keep it. You might as well keep it because giving is a matter of, a, of the heart more than it is about the amount that you give. I want you to get that giving is a matter of your heart rather than the amount that you give. Have you ever been, <laughs> have you ever been to a, a church service and felt like you were guilted to give? Am I the only one? Come on, I, I, I know I've been there. You, you, you go to a church service and it feels like you've been guilted to give because the deacons, they, they stand up there collecting, collecting the off, offering. They make everybody walk around and, and bef- they don't just take the plate and go in the back. They count the money right there in the front. Okay, and then, then, then one of the deacons say, okay, we're about $500 short. We, who got it? Who got it? And everybody looking around, who got it? I don't. <laughs> I so don't got it. Who got it? Who got it? Come on, we not leaving this place. We, we, we're we're five hundred hundred dollars short. I even seen seen a time when, and this was when I was a, a young minister. When, when sh- shortly after I was ordained, I I, I seen where, where the pastor would make a call for a thousand dollar gift. It, 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 I know in the room there there are ten people who could give a thousand so a thousand dollar seed. And so and so he just kept on calling people. Come on, I, I need you to give it that thousand dollar seat. I know it's in the room. I, I just feel it. I just feel it in the room. And people start coming up, waving their checks for a thousand dollars. And I was like, wow, what is going on here? I, she she driving a Hyundai Elantra, but she could come up here with a waving a thousand dollar check. I, I just saw her get, get off the bus to get here, but here she is waving a thousand dollar check. What is going on in this place? The spirit must be here. But then what I realized once we got in, in the back, <laughs> once we got in the back, I, I saw those those thousand dollar checks that people brought and, and placed into the pastor's hand in the back. He gave them checks right back to them. And it blew my mind, y'all. It blew my mind that that that, that, that this was just, just a, a ploy, a, 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 a way to, to entice other people to give. Oh, if, if this if, if she could give a thousand, I, I could at least give another hundred. And so they were able to increase the, the offering by, by, by fooling people, tricking people. By, you, the pastor already knew who these people were who were going to bring this, this check up to the front. And, and, and for a long time, I, 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 just fe- I just felt like I don't want to be a part of this. I don't want to be a part of it. If, if, if we're fooling people, we're tricking people, we're persuading people falsely to, to give rather than teaching them to give from their hearts. We don't have to stand up here for hours just waiting for people to give. We just give if we just teach them the principles of giving. And so those fake $1,000 offerings, it did two things. It, it, it enticed people to give. It, 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 it did. And it also made some people look like they were more important than what they really were. It made people look like I'm, 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 I'm a big giver. I'm, 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 I have a higher status in, in this church because, because I give. I want to give you today's first key point. Don't give a gift to God because of who you think is watching you or who you're watching. Don't give a gift to God because of who you think is watching you or who you're watching. Don't give a gift thinking that me, Pastor Trey, is going to know you gave a gift because I don't count our offering here. I, 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 I don't and, 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 and I don't I don't want to. I, I, I have access. I, 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 can, I can look it up if I want to, but I choose not to, because if I, can, if, I, if, I, if I know that we're teaching the principles, the biblical principles of giving, I just trust that people are going to do what, 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 what they are blessed enough 
to do. We, we, don't have to, we don't have to do anything like that. And, 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 and don't give a gift thinking that, that I'm going to know, thinking that, th- don't give a gift thinking that, you know, you, you, you can uh, assume other people's. Thank you so much. I'm starting to sweat. Don't try to assume other people's giving either. Just because of, of the car that they drive, just because that, that they're business owners, don't, don't, don't uh, assume other people's level of giving because of the clothes that they wear or the, the neighborhood that, that, they, that they live in, because oftentimes you're going to be wrong. You're going to be wrong about, about their, their level of giving. And don't assume what people are giving just because of what you see on Sundays, because here at Life Word Church, 80% of our givers give throughout the week. They're giving throughout the week online. So what you see, you, we, we may have six envelopes here to, to, in our offering bucket on, on, on Sunday. That's because the majority of our givers are giving throughout the week. They're setting up re- recurring giving or, or, or something like that. We even have givers that we haven't seen in three years. We, we do. We have givers that were with us when we were at Leroy Green Academy, but after co- once COVID hit and after COVID and we moved into here, we haven't seen them since. Them since. But I, I recall when we were putting together the year-end statements, I was like, oh, we haven't seen this person in a long time, but they've been giving throughout the year. And, and, and so you, you cannot assume what people are giving and how people are, are giving. And I want to give you this other key point. It's not about people seeing you give. It's about God seeing you give. It's not about me or anyone else in this church seeing what you can give. It's about God seeing you give. And so we, I, I want to just talk a little bit more uh, uh, about tithing uh, for just a moment, because I want us to understand what, what tithing really is, because some, we get kind of that it's so much gray area when, when, when there are discussions about tithing and giving. Now, when it, when it comes to tithing, there is so much debate about what it is and, and, and what it is. It, it is. And I, I, I end up shaking my head when, when I see the, these baby Christians, you, you know what a baby Christian is, somebody who been, been saved for about five minutes. And now just because they're excited, they think they know the whole Bible front and back from Genesis to Revelation. And now they're given all this insight or, or maybe it's even people who haven't been to church since since they did an Easter speech in 1983, and all of a sudden they want to sh- they, they, they tell the world about, about tithing or, or what it really is. And so I shake my head because they're, they, they're, they're misinforming people. And sometimes th- there is a little bit of truth of what they're saying, but, but it, it just, it's just out of context. You know, some, some are, are saying that tithing is an Old Testament thing. That, that's, and, 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 and we don't have to do that today. That, that's what they did in, in the Old Testament. It, it's, it's not, it's not what, what, what we're supposed to do. And some, some say that tithing will not get you any closer to heaven. And some say that you can give a tithe by giving your time. Oh, oh, I, I, I'm just I'm just going to serve. I'm, I'm just going to donate my time. I'm going to donate some clothes. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm donate some, some time to, to serve the, the homeless. That's, that's going to be my tithe. I've heard people people say that, and I want to let you know that they're not completely wrong, but it's out of context. But their opinions are based on a level of comfort rather than their level of spiritual maturity. So many people speak from from their comfort. See, this is what I want to do. This is what I think I can do. So this is how I'm going to speak about it instead of uh, from a level of spiritual maturity. Because if we were spiritually mature, we would understand, oh, the the, the tithe is is my first, my my first fruits. So I'm giving from the first that I have. And and, and so instead, we, we speak from a level of comfort. Well, after all bills are paid, I got about $100, so I got 10 to give to the church. That's speaking from a level of, of comfort. And so here's, here are a few facts. I want to give you a, a couple of facts about tithing. So fact number one, tithing is not intended to be legalistic. It was all about the first. Tithing w- w- was never intended to be a rule or, or a law or anything like that. It was intended to be all about giving your first. We, it, see, now, nowadays we think, okay, if, it, if it's not a, a law, if, if it's not a commandment, then, then I, I don't have to do it. Tithing is not one of the Ten Commandments, so I don't, I don't have to do it. Tithing was not intended to be a law. It was all about the first, even before the law of tithing. There, there eventually was a law of tithing given in, in Leviticus 27, but even before there was a law about tithing, people were already doing it. People were already giving it because this was in their nature. This was established in their culture. It was a principle of, of how, we, how we live. We give our first. 
And, and th- so over time, pe- people were, were, were giving who, who understood the benefit of sowing and reaping. They, 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 they knew that the more I put in, the more I receive in, in, in return. And so e- even, even today, even today, people who, who are not even affiliated with the church, people who don't even believe in God, we have millionaires and billionaires who understand the same principle that if, if I give more, I get more back in return. We, we, we look at Donald Trump when, when they finally released his taxes. It looked like he was broken in us. Because, because he had moved so much money to, I donated to this, I donated to that. And it's not only him. Most millionaires do this because they don't want to pay this, this, this huge amount of taxes. So they, they give money to all these other places, all these other charities, because they know in return I'm going to get something back from this. I'm going to save my, myself millions of money. So, so e- e- even rich people know this, the, the, this law of, of tithing and, and the benefits that, that come from come from it. So even today, people who are not affiliated do this. It's, it's called the law of re- recipro- reciprocity. The more I give, the more comes back to me. It's, it's, it's the law of, of sowing and reaping. Whatever a man sow, he shall also reap. Come on. Amen. And so many of us understand these benefits of tithe, but the problem for many of us is, is that we also understand that there's a lag time between the sowing and the reaping. And so we know, oh, oh, I, I, I want to sow this seed, but I also know there's some lag time in between. There, 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 there's a, a, a process that have to happen. There, there's some wait time. I'm going to be on hold from the time I sow until the time that, that, that I reap. And so I, I want to give you j- just an analogy. I put this in my pocket today, and I'm pretty sure Pastor Tasha is so glad this is finally out of our bedroom because it's been sitting on my nightstand for, for the longest. But this is an avocado seed. And I, I, I used to love just uh, taking an avocado seed, letting it dry out and, and putting it into a cup and just watching it grow, watching it split and, and, and grow and, and, and become become a plant. And so with, with the avocado seed, it takes it takes a long time. You can plant this and it's going to take months even before it starts to sprout. But eventually this one seed, this one seed that you sow into the ground over time. Over a few months, it then becomes a plant. And if you ever saw an avocado plant, it's a beautiful plant, but it takes time. There's some lag time between the sowing and it becoming a plant, but it doesn't stop there because this one seed that eventually over time becomes a plant over time. And this, this takes years. This, I, I think I, I read something. It takes up to 10 years. This one seed becomes a plant. The plant then becomes a tree. And an avocado tree is is a beautiful tree. And then it it doesn't even stop there. Once it's a tree, eventually over time, this one seed that became one plant that became one tree can now produce hundreds of avocados. This one seed over time. Yeah, it's it's some lag time. There's some waiting. There's some there's some there's some there's some work that needs to be put in. But eventually this one seed can produce hundreds of avocados. And so we got to think about it the same way. The one seed that we give today, the one seed that, that we give can produce a harvest later on. And I know sometimes, you know, we, 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 we want the harvest, but we don't want to put the work in. See, see I, 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 let, let me put it this way. Everyone wants to har- harvest, but few are willing to plant the seeds. Everyone, everyone wants to harvest because of, of the fruit we see in Safeway. Come on, we, we walk in the Safeway. Well, you know, Safeway can sometimes be, be a little shady with their fruit. Let's say Sprouts. We walk, in, we walk into the frout, fr- Frouts. We walk into Sprouts or Whole Foods, and we see the fruit and, and how they got it all stacked up high. They put the apples in, in, in a pyramid, and, and, and they all shiny. You can't help but say, ooh, those look good. I, 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 want, I want that. And, and, so, and so we want the harvest because of what we see in, in the fruit and in, in the grocery stores, but we ignore the fact that somebody had to go get the harvest. It ain't no harvest without somebody going, going to get it. Somebody had to go out in that field, and, 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 and harvest work is a lot of dirty work. See, seed planting is easy. Seed planting, you just dropping seeds. Here we go. That's easy. I'm going to plant these seeds, and eventually we're going to reap a harvest. Once it's time for harvest, 
That's where the work is. That's when you're getting out in, in the fields. That's where you got to get elbow deep in mud. You're, you're pulling potatoes out, out, out of the ground. You're plucking fruit from trees. It, it, it's, it's a lot of dirty work when it comes to harvest time. But all we see is the pretty fruit in the grocery store. And we think that's what the harvest is, is all about. But no, there, there's a lot of dirt, dirty work that happens in the harvest. Harvest requires some digging, some pulling, some walking through mud, and, and even some throwing away. See, we don't see that. We don't see that it requires some th throwing away. You see, the, the stores, we only see the best of the harvest. We only see the, 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 the best of, of, of the best, but we don't see the millions of tons of, of fruit that gets thrown away. I, I was watching something. Pastor, Pastor Tasha and I, we just get enamored by some of these uh, documentaries on, on how they make certain food, how it ends up on, on, on your grocery step, on, on your grocery shelves. And one of the ones that we were watching, it, it was showing how, how um, I, I think it was uh, potatoes. Um, they, they were showing how potatoes, how, how they come from the farm, go to the plant and end up in the grocery store or, or they get manufactured into french fries or something like that and, and the process that it goes through and do you know that entire process from from farm to the grocery store can sometimes take less than two days they, they, they make that process happen so so quickly but it's a, it's a, a lag time that, that, that happens but it, it, even when it comes to fruit do you know that, that there, there are these huge machines that once the, 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 the harvesters take the fruit from the trees, they, they, they're just plucking everything. They're not looking at it. Oh, this, is, this one is pretty. We're going to take that one. They just take it all. And it goes through this conveyor belt and through this big machine. And what this machine does, it, 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 it identifies any fruit that has a blemish or a bruise on it, and it spits it out. Only the good fruit, only the, I should say, only the pretty fruit continues on and gets onto the truck and, and into the gro grocery store. And so, but the ugly fruit, it, and, and they really call this, this, the ugly fruit, the ones that, that look a little defected, the ones that seem to have two heads or something like that, they get rejected. And what happens to that, those are the ones that turn into fruit-based products like your applesauce, you know, or, or, your, or your fruit juices. That's, you, you're, you're eating and drinking the, the, the ugly fruit. I just want to let you know that. <laughs> but it still tastes good. It's just that on the outside, it's blemished and it's bruised and it's, ugly but it still has a purpose it's still useful or some of the fruit that, that that that's blemished or ugly they just send it back out into the fields to allow it to rot why would they do that pastor trey because they're a lot they're going to mix that that rotten fruit with with manure to create fertilizer for the next generation of crop so even something that's rotten even something that's bad even something that's spoiled still has a purpose I want to let you know the same, the same thing works for you. You may feel like you, you've been rejected. You may feel like I have nothing to give. But do you know that God can still use what's been rotten for a purpose? He can still use what's been battered, what's been bruised. He can still use that for a purpose. You just got to be ready and willing to be used. That, that's what it's all about. So, so every blessing you reap was attached to some ugly fruit. Just, just like in, in the store, every, every, every fruit, every, those pretty strawberries that, that we see, it was attached to a vine with an ugly one. Every blessing that you receive was also attached to some ugly fruit. There were some situations that you've been through. See, people only see the shine. They only see, they only see, they only see the pretty you, but they, 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 don't, they don't, didn't see the ugly you. They didn't see you doing the ugly cry in your closet last week. They, they didn't see all the hurt that you've been experiencing. They didn't see the disappointment and the pain, the, the times that you were rejected, the times that you were cheated, the times that you missed out. They didn't see that because all they see now is the shine, but they did not see how many times that you were rejected. A bit. Over and over again, you went through that machine, and sometimes you didn't go through. Sometimes you had to be put back out in the field so that you can re reap a harvest for someone else. See, the harvest is not always about you. Your harvest may be for someone else. So just because you've been rejected, it, it may be because God said, I, 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 I need you to go back out in the field because there's somebody there that I need to connect you with. And so the blessing will not be just for you, but for someone else. And so over the, the, the next few weeks, we're going to hear a lot of people talk about harvest time in the church or in society. A lot of people say 2024 is my year for harvest. I, everything that, that I've reaped, I'm going to sow in 2024. 
and, 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 and it, it will be there harvest time. And that's great. That's great. It's, it's wonderful that we should have a, a vision, a, a, a positive vision, a, a, a positive outlook for, for, for the next year. But are you willing to roll up your sleeves? Are you really to, r- willing to do the dirty work that it takes to reap the harvest? Are you willing to dig deep and, and really receive? Are you really, really t- willing to do the work that nobody sees? It's nice that when people see our shine, but are, they, are you willing to show people the dirty work that you put in? Fact number two. I'm going to go through the rest of these pretty quickly. Fact number two. Tithing is an offering in faith and not a down payment. Did you hear me? Tithing is an offering in faith and not a down payment. God gave Jesus as an offering while we what? We're still yet sinners. He didn't wait for us to put a down payment. Well, I need you to get your life right before I offer my son. I, 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 need, you, I need you to stop gossiping. I need you to stop cussing. I need you to stop drinking. I, I need you to get your life right before I, I give something to you. God is not uh, asking for a down payment. He said, I'm, 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 I'm giving it to you in faith. And so the same thing with us, we, 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 we cannot get a, a sneak preview of the blessing that God has for us. We know God has something for us, but God, can you give me a sneak preview of what it is? Can, 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 can I see a little bit? Can, can you give me a down payment on it? Can I, can I just feel it in my hands a, a, a little bit? And, and then I, 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 I'll, I'll give an offering of faith. I'll serve you a lot more if I could just, if I could just see and feel what, 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 what you're doing. God said, I'm not looking for a down payment. And I'm not I'm not I'm not giving you one by faith, it says by faith, we, we, we are redeemed. And, and so God is not looking for that down payment. God didn't say I need a down payment before I bless you. I, 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 I need I, I need to see a sign from you. Come on. We always say that. Lord, I just need a sign. Lord, Lord, just give me a sign that you're working. D- does God say I need a sign from you before I bless you? Maybe we should give him a sign and maybe the blessing would happen a lot much more faster than us just sitting around waiting for a sign from him. Fact number three, if tithing is about the first, the first redeems the rest. Come on, we're talking about a gift of redemption. The first redeems the rest. Many of us will, will, will many of us will, will put tithing in, into our budget like 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 it's a, like it's a monthly bill. Come on, a, a lot of people do this. We, we put tithing into our, our budget like it's a monthly bill, and the amount we give is based on how much our bills are, right. how much our other bills are. Well, you know, it's wintertime. we got to turn on the heat. So I know that PG&E bill is going to be sky high. Come on, we always say that when, when it gets cold in the wintertime, and the first time we turn on that thermos, that, Lord, I know this mud bill is going to be sky high this next month. And so our, our giving, our tithing is, is, is based on what's happening in, 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 in our life, in the life around us. Rather than it being the opposite, let me give first and then I can manage my life with the rest. It says here, like I said, the first redeems the rest. The first redeems the rest. Some, and and, and, and here, here's a truth. Some of us are living on our first. Hmm. Some of us are living on our first. Some of us gave our first for that new apartment that we're living in. Some of us gave our first to that new home that we're living in. Some, some, some of us are even wearing our first. Come on, ooh, I, I, I can't go, go without that, that new Louis belt, that new Louis belt. So I, I know it costs $300, but I'm going to get it. Some of us are, are wearing our first. Some of us are even driving our first. Ooh, I, just, ooh, I know I just bought a car last year, but I'm going to get another one. So... I'm, it's going to come from our first, so here, here, here it is. We're driving our first. Some of us are even eating our first. Come on, ooh, I ain't been to Q1227 in a while. I know, this, I know it's going to cost me about $200. I know it's going to cost me about $200, but that food sure is good. I, I, I know I, I haven't gave my, my, my offering yet. I haven't gave my tithe yet, but Q, that, that cowboy steak is calling me. Some of us are eating our first, and then we wonder after all our bills are paid, why we're not left with much. Mm-hmm. At the end of the month, we talk about, where did where, my money go? It, it just seems like my, my, my money, and we, we want to blame our kids. You just eat me out of house and home. No. <laughs> no. It's because we're giving our first to other places instead of to God. But the opposite is true for those who practice tithing from a biblical pr- perspective. And they give their first. How do I, they, 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 instead of asking ask the question, where did all my money go? 
people who live off the, 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 the principle of giving their first, they're saying, how do I have so much left over? Because they're living in the overflow. They're, they're, they're practicing the, the principle that they're doing what they're, what they're blessed to do. They're, they're giving their first, just like they did in the Old Testament. They continue to do that. I'm giving from, from my first to God. And God said, okay, the, the rest is you. You, 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 you manage the, and when you manage the rest, you'll realize, yeah, I do have overflow. Some of us are saying, okay, if I give all, all of a sudden, and, and I can't stand, I get so angry every time I, I see those Peter Popoff commercials on BET late at night. <laughs> because I know them people lying. Talk about, the, I, I just woke up one morning and went to the mailbox, and there was a check for $15,000. Lady, you know you had to do something for that check. Checks just don't pop up in the mail. And, and so we, we get enticed by, by, by these false prophets that are telling us all we got to do is give this gift. And all of a sudden, we just going to find money. No, you not. Because Uncle Sam going to find you. <laughs> so, so, and, and so, and so we, we, we think that if, if I just give, all of a sudden, money just going to fall out of the sky. No, if you give and practice the principles of, on how to manage money, I invite you to read through, through the book, book of Proverbs. It, there are so many principles in there on how to manage your finances. And when you do that, you will realize there is money left over every month. I, I am now living in the overflow of what I already have. Yeah. I'm not waiting for the, this un, unforeseen check in the mail to show up. And that's where the concept of overflow comes from. There are three phases of overflow. I'm almost done. There are three phases uh, uh, to, to living a life in, in the overflow. And, and, the, and the, first, the first is the tithe. And the tithe, of course, we now know belongs to God. God said it in, in, in the beginning, your first, your first child, your, your, your first of, of, of your livestock, your first of your, your money. He said, that belongs to me. And so th th there's the tithe and then there's the rest. After the tithe, there's the rest. That's that 90 percent that we talk about. Come on. God, God says, look, if, if, if you ha make a thousand dollars, just give me a hundred. And you work off, uh, off the other 900. That's manageable. That's not asking too much. But what, what, does, what does the IRS say? You make $1,000, I won't fold. And you live off of the other six. Come on, come on. And, and God just said, I, 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 just, I just want, want, want the first. Just give me that, that first. And so the, the rest belongs to us. And, and, and if we are good stewards over that rest, that, that, that 90 percent, you get to the third phase, which is the abundance, the overflow and the, the abundance and the overflow that goes to others. Come on. It feels good when we can give to others. Come on. It, it feels good when we when, when we can give not not from 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 our rest, not from our 90 percent. But when we can give from our overflow, when we can give because, you know, I, I, I have this left over so I, I can give it away. And, and, and it's not it's not good. It's not going to affect me because everything else is taken care of from my 90. So, yeah. So it, it's, it's easy for me to give from from my overflow. Right. So, Pastor Trey, I get all that. I know you're probably saying, Pastor Trey, I get all that. But. You're speaking. You're still speaking from the Old Testament. I thought we were now a byproduct of of the New Testament. Well, if you've been here long enough, you've heard me say this, and I'll I'll say it again: that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. I think we got that on the screen, right? Yes. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. Every, everything we, we, we didn't, uh, what we read in the Old Testament, some of the things we don't understand. And when, 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 they, when they talk about certain things, when they talk about uh, an, an advocate, when, we, when, we, when they say that in, in the book of Isaiah, we don't really understand it because, because the, the true essence of, of it is all concealed. But we see in the New Testament, all that was done, all that was said when they were giving their, their first fruits, when they were sacrificing, it all led up to what the, the sacrifice, the true sacrifice sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. So now everything that was done in the Old Testament and the New Testament is now revealed. And so I, I, want, I want us to go to, to, to John, our last scripture, John chapter one. And this, this proves, proves my point about the Old Testament and the New Testament being concealed and revealed. John chapter one, verse one through five, it says, in the beginning was the word. No, in the beginning, the word already existed. Right. Your first God's first. It, it, it was there for, from, from the beginning. It says, and the word was with God. 
And the word was God. Verse two, he existed in the beginning with God. Verse three, God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. Verse four, the word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. Verse five, and the light shines in the darkness and darkness can never extinguish it. Can we drop down to to verse 10 for just a moment? Verse 10 says he came into He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. Some scriptures say the world despised him. He was that ugly fruit. When they put him through the machine, it spit him right out. It rejected him. It said the world didn't recognize him. He came into his own people and they rejected him. He was Jesus was that ugly fruit. Then verse 12 says, but all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Verse 13, they are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and righteousness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son, his first And verse 15 says, John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds. This is the one I was talking about when I said someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. And then here's the key from verse 16. From his abundance, everybody say abundance. From his abundance, we all have received one gracious blessing after another. Jesus was God's first to us. What does your first look like? If Jesus was God's first to you, what does your first to God look like? Your first will redeem the rest that leads to your overflow. Your first will redeem the rest that leads to your overflow. And I added this one in and, 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 and I'm, for the sake of time, I'm, I'm just going to give this to you re- really quick. And and before I give it to you, I, I know a, a lot of preachers, they, they will say they will recite this verse and just give you the, the, the first few, few words. And that's it. And it makes you feel guilty. You, you think that you're a criminal and thief and you need to be prosecuted. But I want to I want to give give you the, 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 the entire substance so you really understand. And so we, we, we used to hear it in, in, in the church a lot. The, 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 the pastor right before offering time, he would go back to the last book in the Old Testament. Malachi. Come on. We all know it. Malachi, chapter three, verse eight. And it says, will a man rob God? And he stopped right there. Will a man. Will you rob God? And make you feel like you, oh, I'm just a criminal because I haven't gave in a while. I'm I'm just a a criminal. But let's go a little bit deeper. It says in in Malachi chapter three, verse eight, it says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? God said, in tithes and offering. You are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me. Even this whole nation bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. So this is what he's talking about when he says, bring all the tithes into my house so that there may, may, may be food. He's not talking about so that so that we can have this million dollar building. He's talking about so that there be, may be literal food. We've been talking here about building a food pantry for three years, but we have yet to do it. Why? Because we have not brought all the tithes and offering into the storehouse. But I declare, I declare, and I pray that after this message that you will get it, that we're bringing tithes and offering into his storehouse so that they may be food for his people. So we're going to get there. And then it goes on to say, see, he wasn't done there. I I want you to put food into my storehouse, into my house. He said, and now try me on this. Try me on this. So some, some, some versions, some translations say, and put me to the test. We always say, we always say, don't, don't you test God. God is telling us right here. He said, put me to the test. Try me on this. 
And it, 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 it says, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour out a blessing. Such a blessing that there will not be enough room for you to receive it. That's the overflow. If you would just try God, if you would just try his way, if you would just try from your first, you will have blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings that there will not be enough room. You cannot hold all the blessings that God for you. If you just decide this, I'm going to try you, God. I'm going to test you on this one. You said to try you on this one. You said to test you. That's sure enough what I, I'm going to do. So I'm going to give from my first. Here it is, God. Here's my tenth. Here's my tithe. Now do what you want to do with it. And let me see. Let me see the goodness that you have for me. Try God and put him to the test. Make the commitment. Now I'm closing with this. Make the commitment for one year. Make the commitment for one year. I was just talking about lag time. You plant that avocado seed, you're going to wait 10 years before there's an even opportunity to reap an avocado from that seed. But I'm just saying give God one year of your best. We talked about it a couple months ago with our All In campaign. Giving God one year of your best, your best service, your best time, your best worship, your best offering. Give him one year of that. Why a year? Because no seed planted today will reap a harvest tomorrow. I know we live in this microwave generation and we just want to put something in the microwave and press that 30 second button. Come on. I don't know why we do that. It got nine other digits on there, but we just going to press that 30 second button. We may press it. It may say put it in for two minutes. We just go press 30 seconds four times. I know I do it. Because we want it done quick. If, if, if there's a way that I could push this 30 second button and, 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 and I get what I want that fast, then, then I'm going to do it. And we take that same mindset with our food. We take our same mindset with everything else in our life. If I could just push this button, if, 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 if I could just call, call this 1-800 number and Peter Popoff sent me this, this, little, this little tube of water and I drink it, and then real quick, just like that, I'm going to have a $15,000 $15, in the mail. We got to get out of that mindset and just say, I'm good. God, I'm going to let you give you the lag time that you need. I'm going to give you the, the, the time that you need for the harvest, for the harvest to come in my life. So give God a year of your best. Give God a year of your best offering. Give God a year of your best tithing. Give God a year of your best service. Give God a year of your best praise. Give God a year of you. And it says, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it. That's the overflow. Somebody say overflow. overflow. Come on, if, 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 you, if, if, you, if you got any tattoos and you think about getting another one, put overflow on your arm. <laughs> I, try me on this one. <laughs> I ain't got, don't try me on that one. <laughs> but put it, put it on your social media. Hashtag it. Overflow. Because if, if you declare that I want to live a life in the overflow, th there's some prerequisites to that. That means, okay, God, I'm willing to put you to the test. But if you're going to put God to the test, be ready for him to put you to the test as well. He's going to require something from you. If you're requiring or, or expecting something from God, there's something. It's that gift of, it's, it's, it's that law of reciprocity. Sowing, reaping. We cannot live a life just saying, live a life of just saying, I'm going to live a life of reaping. I'm going to just get until I can't get no more. And then I'm going to move on to the next church. I'm going to move on to the next friendship. I'm going to move on to the next relationship after I got. All, that, that's a leech type of life. I'm going to just suck all I can out of you until, you're, until, until there's nothing left of you. And then I'm going to move on to the next. But we see in God's word, there's a sowing, there's a giving, and there's a taking. And don't, and don't be ashamed of the taking. For so long, I, I, I've been telling my family, don't buy me no Christmas gifts. And, and, and I realized that they were hurt by that because they want to give to me just as much as I give to them. It's that law, give and take, sowing and, 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 and reaping. And so God says, that's how it's supposed to be. Give to me, and I'm going to give back to you 
so much in abundance because he's that El Shaddai. He's the God of more than enough. You won't have enough room to receive it. We love that last part. Ooh, God is going to bless me because there won't be enough room to receive it. But we also got to go back to, to, to verse 8 in Malachi. Will a man rob God? How have I robbed you, God? By not bringing the tithes and offerings into my store, into, into my house, so there'll be food for my people. So th there has to be the, the verse 8 through, through 9 before, before we get to the verse 10. The overflow. Trust the process. Sometimes you will be rejected. Sometimes you will be that ugly fruit. But there's still a purpose for you. There's still value in you. And maybe the next time around, after you went back out into the field, the next time around, now you're the pretty fruit and the world sees your shine. No one saw my shine when I, when I first accepted this call into the ministry. Y'all, I didn't even see my shine. I doubted this calling for so long. And, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to, to say it. I, I've told people many times before, I'm probably 10 years behind where I should be because I fought this calling for at least 10 years. Life Word Church should be 10 years beyond where we are right now if I would have just trusted God and tried him 10 years before than when I decided to try him. But I went back out into the field to be used some more and trusted the process. See, I realized that going back out in the field and, and even during that time where I thought I wasn't worthy enough, even though th that time where I, I doubted my calling, God was saying, that's your lag time. That's your lag time. That, that, that's, that, that's the time from, from when the seed was first planted in, in you, when, when your grandmother, when you were 14 years old, told you, you're going to be a pastor one day. You're going to preach God's word one day. And you couldn't believe it. There was some lag time to the point to, until 2019 came where you were actually pastoring and leading a church. There was, that, there was, that's a long lag time. I, I ain't counting them years. But I'm just going to say that. That was a long time, y'all. There's going to be a lag time in your life, but you just got to trust that the seed was planted and you will eventually reap the harvest. But you just got to practice the power that's in your first. Amen. Let's pray right now. Father in heaven, we just thank you, oh God.